Hello again, my little guys. Uh, today we're gonna look at the Tube Screamer. This is, I believe, the TS-808, which is the one that everybody uh, loses their mind over. Um, yeah, so first things first, this whole... Oh, also, I got this from electrosmash.com again. These guys just have the best schematics out there, seems like. Um, great information. Go to Electrosmash. Uh, anyway, this whole orange box, is like this JFET bypass switch, we're just gonna ignore this. Because basically all it does is it's a really fancy on-off switch. Uh, so you can absolutely get the same tube screamer sound cutting out this whole thing and just going through bypass. Just connect the in and the out through a switch. So we're gonna ignore that. And because of that, look at that, I got a simplified schematic without it. All right, let's uh, let's get into it. Let me grab my little drawing tool here. So, starting with the power section. This is a fun little trick right here. You see, this is a uh, nine volt battery and it's connected to this uh, normalized pin of the uh, power jack. So basically, this battery will power your circuit unless you have something plugged in to the power jack, in which case this uh, connection gets severed, so this battery uh, turns off to save the power of the battery. This is a little clever little thing. I like that. It's a nice move. More people should do that. I mean, it's pretty common, but, you know, it's good. Anyway, uh, this diode, I think, again, I said this in the, in the rat video, if you guys watched that, this is probably not best practice, you know? It, it's good to have something here for reverse power protection, but we can do better than that now. Look up, look up something else if you're designing your own pedal or you want to mod this or something. Uh, this capacitor is just to boost this 9 volts in case of like sudden power draw or a voltage spike or whatever. This will sort of stabilize that. And then we have another, uh, this is a voltage divider. R33 and R32 between 9 volts and 0 volts. Um, yeah, just giving us a middle point there. This is a four and a half volts. You'll see this in um, schematics and stuff a lot, where instead of 4.5 volts, you'll see four volts, five. Um, and that's just in case, you know, when you're printing stuff on components and something, if you, it, it could easily be misread uh, as 45 volts if the dot doesn't make it there. So they'll do, you know, 4v5. I don't know why I'm writing this again. You can read it. They'll do 4v5. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Uh, yeah, so the reason we, we have that is so that we can um, get this op amp to uh, exist in the middle of our 9 volts. Uh, yeah, just to have a nice middle point reference point later. Anyway, let's get into the meat of this circuit. Our signal comes in. We got a, a DC blocking uh, capacitor here. This is a high pass filter, so your audio will resonate through there, but any uh, offset voltages will get blocked. Um, and the, the, if you want to find the center frequency of that, you got to use these. Uh, you know, I will do that later. Uh, <laughs> well, now that I've said it, let's do it now. Here's the equation if you want to find the center frequency of any. Um, Filter, any RC filter. This works for uh, high pass and low pass filters. Uh, yeah, so center frequency is equal to one over two pi, or tau, uh, R C. And that's R, like, uh, basically to ground. And you gotta remember, uh, AC sees all kinds of stuff as ground. It sees uh, positive and uh, zero volts as ground. So watch out for that. And C is in farads. So check it out. This is 0.02. Generally when it's not labeled, it's micro farads. So you, you're gonna have to use like, what is that? 0.0000002 farads, right? That's a, you gotta move the decimal place a lot. So watch for farads. <laughs> anyway, that'll find the place on a filter curve where you get a three decibel drop, and that's true for high pass and low pass filters. That's where the three decibel drop is. That's what we call the center frequency. Don't ask me why it's three decibels. I don't know why, okay? Don't bother me. Anyway, what we have here, this section, this is, ba this is a bog standard, uh, this is what we call a common collector amplifier. So this is a really common thing to do with NPN 
bijunction transistors. Um, yeah, so basically it's a non-inverting amplifier with essentially unity gain. So all this is doing is just making sure that the impedance of your guitar and stuff uh, is doesn't really muck up the stuff going on in here. So basically just copies the audio here and makes a new version of it right here at the input of a non-inverting amplifier configuration of an op amp, right? Um, this is not connected, this is ground right here. Uh, I don't know why they didn't just put these two components up here, you know, like that. Because that would have been much easier to read. But whoever made this didn't. And that's fine, because they're doing good work at the Electro Smash anyway. So basically, this is a non-inverting uh, yeah, non amplifier um, where you put the input, that's a plus sign, you put your input into inputted audio into or whatever input voltage into the non-inverting input and then your inverting input has a little feedback resistor as well as a resistance to ground and the relationship of I'm going to label that RF for feedback and this is RG for R ground the relationship there is what sets the gain at the output here um, and you want to put RF on top of RG like that, and that'll get you the gain in voltage. That's A is gain, the voltage gain. Yeah. So looks like there's more going on here, but that's that's basically what this is. And then uh, they do some tricks in there. So. Um, if you saw the video I put up on the RAT schematic, you probably recognize that this capacitor is really just there to filter out some high frequency oscillations that can happen on um, these kinds of amplifier configurations. Uh, this is generally in like the 100 kilohertz range, so it's higher than you can hear, but it does affect the sound just having that oscillation, and it draws power, and it's just bad news. So. Uh, this capacitor filters out that top end oscillation style. Some people will say it's for stability. It's, I, I did big air quotes like you can see my face, but you can't. Uh, yeah, so that's what that is. So we're just going to ignore that for now. Uh, and here we have our soft clipping. These two diodes are where the clipping comes. So, um, yeah, diodes typically have a forward uh, voltage bias is what we call it. Um, of usually around uh, 0.6 or 0.7 volts, which means that uh, if, well, let me just isolate it down here. So if we have a diode uh, and we have, you know, 0.5 volts over here, it will not conduct current through it. You have to exceed that 0.6 or 0.7 volts usually um, in order for the diode to conduct. And it also, you know, and in case you're a total noob, these also work as one-way valves, basically, so current will not flow through here, but it will flow that way. Uh, which is why you have two of them here facing in opposite directions, so that your audio can go back and forth, right? Because if you just had one, you would have your audio uh, basically would get clipped on one side, but not the other side of the waveform. Um, yeah. Now, all of that being said, I believe that these diodes, these MA150s, have a, a slightly higher forward voltage. Don't quote me on this, but I think it's 0.9 volts. So there's a little more room before you start clipping on those guys, uh, which is handy for, you know, overdrives. <laughs> but anyway, this is basically the, it, the what makes something an overdrive is that... Uh, the diodes be in, uh, in the... I don't know why I'm just copying it. Whatever. <laughs> the fact that the diodes are in the feedback loop of this op amp instead of in distortion where they would be later on uh, and it would be clipping to ground instead of in this feedback loop. Let me clear that out. Um, meaning like, you know, you'd have clipping diodes after the op amp stage here. 
down to ground like that. That's what a traditional distortion pedal does. So that's basically the difference there. Um, yeah. Now, some other stuff that's funny about this. Here's our distortion level, or overdrive level. Um, this is a little funny. I mean, typically you'll see uh, potentiometers used like this. This is very common. But normally you'll also will connect these two legs. Just because sometimes potentiometers can get weird when you turn them to their extremes. And it's just good to, this just prevents some weird stuff from non-ideal potentiometer stuff. Um, yeah, so that will increase or reduce our gain, right? Which if you remember, AV is equal to our feedback to our ground, right? This pair of resistors is our RF. So just add them together, you know, so our minimum resistance here would be 51K, maximum would be 551K, because you just add them together. Um, now these guys kind of screw that up. <laughs> so if you want to get really precise, you'll have to do more math than that, but that's how you would rough it. Um, yeah, and now down here, this is a fun little thing. Uh, they did something very similar on the rat, if you saw that video. Uh, this is uh, another filter. Uh, but it also acts as ground for um, audio, right? Because if you have a capacitor that goes down to ground, even if it's through a resistor, audio kind of sees that as a ground, um, which is how you get filtering, right? Because it's not all audio. It, it, it depends on uh, the frequency, right? Like high frequencies like this stuff better than low frequencies. So it's, it's, yeah, there's a lot of math to figure that out that I'm not going to get into. That's basically what's going on here. Moving on. Uh, that's where the clipping happens. Everything's cool. You turn this up, you get more volume, more clipping. Turn it down, you get less volume, less clipping. Wahoo. Now, moving on over to here, we have another little bit of filtering. Uh, I didn't do the math on this. I don't know how much that's actually doing. Uh, but this is a uh, low-pass filter which means this is going to be cutting out some of the high stuff, right? Um, yeah. And then we get into this op amp thing here. Uh, but more important, well, before we get into the op amp, we have this filter right here. Now, here we have our potentiometer labeled tone. And what that's doing is, if you remember our filter center frequency thing, which is 1 over 2 pi, I'm going to write the whole thing out all over again. RC, right? Uh, this potentiometer here, excuse me. <coughs> ah. Oh, excuse me. This potentiometer right here is increasing or decreasing the R in this equation. So it's changing our uh, cutoff point for this um, uh, filter. So that's how you get the tone knob affecting the, you know, the highs of your sound. Um, let me clear this out. Boop. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. And then we have another non-inverting amplifier configuration. Uh, it's basically the same thing as this guy over here with a little bit more of a complicated feedback thing, but we don't need to get into that. It's filtering and buffering and amplifying. Yeah. Uh, we got another cap here. This is a high pass filter which blocks DC so that you get the audio bouncing through it, but not any accidental voltage offsets. Um, yeah, and then what do we got here? Uh, volume level. This is another, um, whatchamacallit, a voltage divider, right? Just like this one down here. Uh, the, if you want to figure out what the voltage divider is doing, V out. That's the voltage out is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times the voltage in. So basically the voltage here is voltage in. Um, the voltage between this node and the middle node of your uh, potentiometer is R1. Oops, I only have a line. And then the node from the middle down to ground here is R2. 
So, uh, you know, that's how this knob is going to change your volume, by changing the relationship between R1 and R2 in this equation. So, you know. Um, yeah, and the, the way I find it easiest to think about these guys is not to think about the math so much as to think about the center lug of this potentiometer. Is it closer to ground? As you turn the knob, you know, that way, the center lug will get closer to ground. And if you turn the, no the, the knob this way, you're getting closer to the loudest part of the, of this structure, you know? Uh, yeah. So that's basically voltage dividers. And then uh, guess what we have right here? This bit might look familiar to you because it is another common collector amplifier. It's basically the same thing as over here. In fact, let's look at the components. Okay, so we have a different input capacitor. We have 510K to our reference voltage. That's the same. Uh, 9 volts right to the collector. That's the same. 10K from the emitter down to ground. That's the same. And then, oh, interesting, there's a little 100 ohm resistance, uh, the output, but there is none over here. Interesting difference. Um, yeah, and then uh, that, you know, this is obviously another high pass filter that blocks DC. Ooh, I'm just talking about a thing, this cap right here. No more DC stuff coming out of there. Not that they're, uh, well, anyway. There would be actually, yeah, because this is biased to our uh, 4.5 volt reference stuff. So now this capacitor uh, gives us a 10K output impedance, but it also biases this node to ground so that our audio is bouncing around zero volts up and down. Um, yeah, and that's the tube screamer. So, um, you can think of it in basically four stages, right? There's an input buffer right here. There's a non-inverting amplifier with soft clipping, right? That clipping's happening here with these diodes. Um, and then here's the amount of gain. <clears throat> we have a filtering section that also has another little bit of a non-inverting amplifier with, I mean, with some, you know, the, the, I don't know. There's probably a name for this specific. It's not Salon Key, but it's all, it almost looks like it a little bit. But whatever. There's, there's a probably name for this specific type of filtering. Uh, but I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, yep. And then we have uh, volume control. Boom. And uh, output buffer. Yeah. Did I say four parts? I guess that's five. <laughs> uh, and then the filter section. Let's call it six. Yeah, so if you can, uh, if you can uh, understand this guy in smaller bits, it's easier to analyze these guys. You know, once you can start to recognize these big structures, all of these pedals start to look just like little uh, Lego blocks. You know, you just put a buffer, and then a non-inverting amp with some clipping, and then a filter with, with a little another op amp in there, and then you got a little volume thing, and then another buffer on the output. That's the same as this, you know? So, um... Yeah, that's how you do it. That's how it's done. That's what a tube screamer is. <clears throat> uh, and again, I, I this is you know there's also the the uh, funny buffer switch thing, but we're not gonna we, we cut it out. <laughs> I'll just let me just go back to show you. Yeah, this whole thing we could analyze this, but honestly, I don't I don't wanna. It's kind of cool. It is a novel. Like just look at this crazy routing stuff going on down here. This is an interesting way of switching. It really is, but it doesn't affect the sound that much. So we're going to ignore it. Also, these switches in the Tube Screamer just break constantly. This, they use these tiny little, oh, they're bad. So, uh, not that momentary switches in general are bad, but the specific ones that they use are not good. So that's the Tube Screamer, that's the 808, the TS-808. I hope that you enjoyed this. Like and subscribe, you know? Leave a comment about uh, if I got one of the equations wrong or if you think my hair looks stupid. All right, I'm gonna stop talking now. Have a nice one. <coughs> <coughs> Goodbye. Oh.